Thank you, Werner. Um, good morning. Hi there. Uh, happy to be here today to talk about FINRA's aggressive AWS journey. So what, are, what is FINRA? We are a regulator. Uh, we monitor and regulate the brokerage industry and the stock markets. And the purpose is to protect investors and make sure the markets have integrity. So how do we do this exactly? We do this by monitoring everything that occurs in the stock markets. And this would be orders to buy, orders to sell, trades, a lot of transactions. And we reconstruct the entire market set of events into a database that has trillions of nodes. And then we run hundreds of surveillances against that database to look for market manipulation and fraud. And in doing this, we handle a tremendous amount of data. We are a big data shop. Uh, we just recently, in the last few weeks, hit a new peak of 155 billion market events that were ingested in a single day for this purpose. That's two times what it was three years ago. And by the way, when we hit these peaks, we don't even notice them operationally because the capacity provisioning is elastic and automated. So let's just look at some of the numbers. Uh, typically, we'll have 50,000 compute nodes available uh, to process these peaks. We do a half a trillion data validations per day, and we have 67 trillion records that we've collected over the past several years. And our surveillances look at history. They don't just look at what's happening in the current market day. They look across a broad spectrum of time. So all this is in AWS. It's been that way since 2014. And the scale that we have at our, at our um, available, available for us it just was not previously possible. So we began this journey to AWS and the public cloud in 2012, and we started by moving our most critical applications, the market surveillance, the big data applications first, because they had capacity limitations in our data centers. And we did this move to AWS in, in conjunction with automating our DevOps, becoming agile, and standardizing on open source big data software. And since we moved to the AWS uh, you know, since 2016, we've moved the balance of our applications. So we're all in on the cloud right now. Uh, virtually all of our apps, all of our data are now in the public cloud. And what's interesting about this is that our net costs have actually decreased, which, you know, wh where does that happen, right? So let's look at some of the other benefits. Some of the other benefits are analytics. We've got immense data scale. We've moved our queries from looking at data puddles that had to be staged and set up by IT to ma massive data lakes. And so now queries that used to take days or hours now take minutes and seconds. Security is superior to what it was before. With micro-segmentation, encryption, um, the monitoring and alerting activities, among many other things, we just couldn't economically afford to do the data protection that is available in the cloud. Uh, innovation, very important. We did it right. You have to architect your applications in AWS to be cloud enabled. And in doing so, you can automatically refresh your applications and modernize them to keep up with the evolving and innovating services that are available in the cloud. And this allows you to continuously improve price performance, and basically be mark to market to Moore's law. And then lastly, reliability. The reliability, you know, given that our apps were designed to run across multiple um, availability zones, it's a ubiquitously come up every morning in different data centers and av availability zones, gives you far greater uh, diversity and protection against uh, natural disasters. Essentially, our disaster recovery is tested daily in this regard. We've got a broad use of AWS services, and we're continuing uh, to work with AWS to keep this list growing. 
Specific examples in the area of big data analytics would be S3 for industry data ingestion, Lambda and EC2 for data validation, EMR and S3 for storage functionality, and lastly, Elasticsearch and SageMaker for big data analytics. So we leverage the AWS flywheel, and this is a very important point. We've redesigned our IT organization, our application and platform architecture, developed a culture of innovation and automation so that we could be perfectly positioned to quickly and seamlessly leverage new innovations and services that are made available by AWS. You know, one of a hundred examples is we started with, on H1 fixed Hadoop instance on H-base cluster, and we moved from H to D-class machines using half as many nodes uh, and, and, and got cost savings out of that to boot. We've done three major upgrades to our infrastructure in four years, achieving better price performance. This just wasn't possible previously in a, in a private data center. So why does this flywheel matter? Well, you know, there's, you know, let me give you one great example of why being part of this flywheel allows us to do things that just weren't possible previously. On May 6, 2010, uh, we had our flash crash. The Dow plunged 1,000 points. It was caused by illegal spoofing trading algorithms. Existing regulatory surveillance tools and data weren't able to quickly get to the root cause of this problem. So the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, proposed a new surveillance platform called the Consolidated Audit Trail uh, to address this uh, shortcoming. And FINRA was recently chosen to build and operate this new platform. It's been described in the media as the largest database ever to be built in the financial services industry. Uh, FINRA is well positioned to deliver on this new system. We started working on it earlier this year, and we're already meeting the aggressive milestones associated with this massive project. So going forward, uh, we plan to leverage machine learning, AI, natural language processing, deep learning, neural networks to become a more effective and efficient regulator, to more quickly find market manipulators, fraudsters, insider traders, and just bad brokers. This industry has been talking and dreaming about AI for decades, but with the virtual infinite compute and processing and, and storage scale at continuously commoditized and lower cost, it's now become a reality and machine learning is here. So examples of where we can put machine learning to work specifically at FINRA include anomaly detection, finding the needle in the haystack with massive data, and, and um, minimizing false positives that result from our uh, surveillances. And the results are to become a, a better and faster at catching the bad, the bad guys in our industry. So we anticipate many, many more capabilities going forward as we continue to evolve with the flywheel. And we're excited about continued evolution and the ability to become a better uh, regulator as part of this evolution. Thank you.